These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Remind me, what type of functional group is this? Um, it's an ether. Right. Now, what we're going to focus on today, so yesterday we focused on acyclic ethers. Okay. What we'll focus on today are three-membered cyclic ethers. Here we have a three-membered cyclic ether. That means one oxygen and two carbons. And there's a number of different names for these compounds. It looks like the names that your instructor is using, well, it looks like your instructor is using the name epoxide. And then in parenthesis, they also, he also said oxirane. Another name for these are oxacyclopropane. <clears throat> okay. Oxacyclopropane. But Based on the notes, it looks like the names that your instructor is using, what looks like the main name he's using is epoxide, and he also mentioned oxirains. But your textbook might also call this oxacyclopropane. Why do we have to study oxacyclopropane or epoxide separately from acyclic ethers? Well, going back to this acyclic ether, notice that this acyclic ether has a neutral oxygen. We talked a little bit yesterday. Do you remember our neutral oxygens normally acceptable leaving groups? No. No. We saw that a neutral oxygen is usually not an acceptable leaving group. But the only neutral atoms that are usually acceptable leaving groups are halogens. A lot of the time we use a hal neutral halogen as a leaving group, but we're generally not going to use anything else that's neutral as an acceptable leaving group. Therefore, there isn't much that you can do with this ether until you make this into a better leaving group. And actually, yesterday we saw how to make this into a better leaving group. Do you remember how did we learn that? What, what did we learn we could do that would make this oxygen into a better leaving group? What should we treat this with? Uh, a strong acid. That's right. An acid would protonate this oxygen and give it a positive charge. And we reviewed that things with positive charges then are good leaving groups. But as it stands, this is not very reactive yet. But epoxides are somewhat different. This is a three-membered ring. You and I have never talked about ring strain, but I don't know if, if you learned about ring strain earlier in the term. Do you remember, are three-membered rings stable or stringed? Um, is this an easy type of ring to form or a difficult type of ring with, with three members? Not sure? Now, what was the type of cyclic molecule that you mainly studied last term? You mainly studied cyclohexane, mm -hmm. right? Chair cyclohexane, for example, with six members. And the reason that you focused on that is because that's very stable. Cyclohexane is a very stable ring. It turns out that a three-membered ring is very unstable. Three-membered rings are very <coughs> unstable. Sounds like maybe you never had a chance to use any. Did you ever buy a model kit for this class to, yeah. to build? I don't know if you ever had a chance to use that. But if you ever tried to make a three-membered ring, you would see it's actually almost impossible to get all the little pegs and all the little holes to form the three-membered rings. These are very unstable. It's important to see why that is. What, there's a very big bond angle strain here. Do you know, what, what's the geometry of this carbon? Tetrahedral or trigonal planar? It's going to be, it's a tetrahedral, isn't it? That's right. It's a normal tetrahedral carbon. And do you remember what the bond angle is in a tetrahedral carbon? Tetrahedral carbons have, sorry? 109. That's right. That's good. 109.5 bond angle. In order to be stable and happy, a tetrahedral carbon wants a 109.5 degree bond angle. But what's the natural angle in a triangle? If you, if you have, say, an equilateral triangle, do you know how big the angles would be in a triangle? If we have three angles that all add up, uh, that are all equal, do you know what the, the normal angle would be in a triangle? How many degrees are there total in the triangle? 180? You remember that from geometry? So it'll be 60. That's right. In order to form a three-membered ring, these would have to be 60 degree angles. But notice that 60 degrees is a long way away from 109.5. This is the reason why this is so, has so much strain. The carbon, a tetrahedral carbon, normally wants a 109.5 degree angle. 
but in this ring, it actually needs to have close to 60 degrees to close the ring, and therefore there's a lot of strain here. What does that mean? It means that epoxides are very eager to stop being epoxides, to stop being cyclic, to open the ring. Epoxides are eager to open the ring because then they can get closer to their normal 109.5 degree angle. It's only when we're forming a ring that it's forced to be close to 60 degrees. Okay. Three-membered rings, not just epoxides, but any three-membered ring has a lot of strain, so three-membered rings are relatively easy to open. That means that an epoxide is more reactive than an acyclic ether. This acyclic ether is already relatively happy because it's not in a three-membered ring, but this is relatively unhappy because it is forming a ring. This is relatively reactive and unstable. Okay. And the result of that is we're going to be able to use the neutral oxygen as a leaving group here. We're going to be able to use the neutral oxygen as a leaving group even though we normally can't use neutral oxygen as a leaving group because that'll allow us to open the ring. We'll see some examples in a minute or two. Yesterday we talked about how anytime you learn about a new functional group, you have to learn how to make it and what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. That's called learning how to synthesize it and learning its reactions. That's what we tried to do for acyclic ethers yesterday, learn how to synthesize them and what you can do with them. We can learn one, just one or two examples of each of those. We have to do the same thing for epoxides, learn how to make it and some things that we can do with them. Okay. Epoxides are synthesized with peroxy acids, peroxy carboxylic acids. A peroxy group is when you have two oxygens that are bound to each other. We haven't seen any examples of this before. We've, only, we've always only had a single oxygen by itself. But if you have two oxygens bound to each other, that's a peroxy group. Per is Latin or Greek for extra. So here we have an extra oxygen, peroxy. This is the general formula for a carboxylic acid. This looks a lot like the carboxylic acid, but here we have two oxygens bound to each other. So here we have a peroxy group. So this would be called a peroxy carboxylic acid. Peroxy carboxylic acid, or for short, you could call it a per acid. Per acid, which stands for peroxy acid, or peroxy carboxylic acid. The key point is that the per tells us that it's got two oxygens bound to each other. These are the types of things that we use to make epoxides, per acids. This is per acetic acid. <laughs> All right. This is acetic acid. This is the formula for acetic acid, so if we add an extra oxygen, then it would be per acetic acid. I guess the full name would be per oxy acetic acid, but for short, we could call this per acetic acid. This is one of the common per acids that we use for making epoxides.
this is MCP BA. You can see this is another per acetic, this is another per acid, because again we have two oxygens bound to each other. I left something out. MCPBA. The C, the C stands for chloro. The per stands for per. The P stands for per. The B stands for benzene. This is a benzene ring, and this is an acid. 